Welcome back everybody, Bearded Griller here. Sorry you haven't heard from me in a while. I've been playing out in my shop. I thought maybe if I took some time out of the kitchen, I'd lose a little weight. Just turns out I found a new, really expensive hobby. But hey, I've got a bunch of cool tools. I figured I'd show you guys what they do. I didn't film the beginning process of how to cut and make all the segments, but I'll be making a video on my next bowl to show how to do that. This is a bowl made of segments made from Spectraply, which is pieces of Baltic birch dyed and glued together in different patterns so that they look pretty cool when you turn them on a lathe. Here at the beginning, I'm just roughing out the shape, trying to get all the hard edges knocked off and see what we're working with. Hope you guys like this video. It's my first time doing a voiceover, so take it easy on me. I'm trying to find some decent music that's uh, royalty free. Wish they'd bring back Napster. If you're like me, or should I say my wife, and you don't really care about the whole process on how it's done, go ahead and jump ahead to about the 8 minute mark, save yourself some time, and uh, see what it looks like when it's all said and done. I messed up when I cut the pieces for this project. I meant to rotate them another 90 degrees so I would be cutting with the grain. As you can tell, I'm pretty much cutting in grain for the entire project. I'm by far no master or know-it-all when it comes to this stuff. I just watched a lot of YouTube. This end grain wants to tear out constantly. You can see on the inside it's pretty nasty. I roughed out the shape of the bowl and I'm going to hit it with 60 grit on a self-powered sander just to save wall thick. Looks like we were able to get almost all the tear out sanded out with some 60 grit and save the bowl. I'm going to shape the bottom now and I'll finish the bottom of the bowl once my Coles jaws show up. see the tear out on the inside of this bowl is pretty gnarly. I'm going to stop here, hit it with some sanding sealer to keep the colors from running together, and then uh, 
I'll take and fill any of these spots with epoxy. By the time I get the epoxy sanded off, I should be down to the bottom of the tear out. I'm using Varathane sanding sealer. I'm going to start with one coat. I'll probably end up doing two. Here you can see the sanding sealer is dried. I went ahead and filled all the little spots of tear out with some epoxy and it's cured. We'll go ahead and knock off the high spots with some 60 grit and then start making a bowl. You can tell I've got pretty much all the epoxy off with the 60 grit. I'm going to sand it a little bit more and then I'll start working my way up to about. Okay, we've hit 800 inside and out. Everything feels nice and smooth. I've got a bar of Carnuba wax. Lades running at about 600 RPM. I'm just going to push that in there till it starts to melt and then I'll work my way back and forth with some hard pressure and a paper towel until it gets nice, silky smooth, and shiny before we take it to the buffing wheel. This is my buffing setup, what I use on uh, my pens that I make. I'm not sure if it's the best way to buff a bowl, but use what you got, right? This was my first attempt at a Spectraply segmented bowl. This just has a wipe on poly finish. I wasn't super happy with it. I felt like it muddied the colors between the layers of the Spectraply. But it still turned out pretty cool. This was my second attempt at a Spectraply segmented bowl. This one's also finished with Carnuba Wax. And this is our finished segmented bowl. Looks pretty sweet. Feels silky smooth. As you can see, still need to finish the bottom. Been waiting on my Coles jaws to show up forever now. So We'll get that knocked out as soon as those show up. Thanks for watching.